Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me uh, today. First of three interviews, I have Ocean Township co Coach Michael Laser. Michael, thank you for joining me. Oh, thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, uh, I appreciate it. Um, you know, uh, a lot of schools, tough starts to this, you know, season already. Um, uh, what can you say so far, you know, the first week, week and a half of practice? Well, uh, first week of practice is, is as far as the girls that I have, I'm, I'm really enjoying being in the gym with them. Um, they're doing a tremendous job working hard. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're figuring out what we are and, and who we are. Uh, we got a lot of new faces, but I do have some seniors coming back as well. So I have some leadership as well in that area. Um, you know, the hard part right now is our, our numbers are very small at Ocean. And I've been talking to some of the other coaches. I might have the smallest numbers in the shore right now. So uh, I think our, our team was at, we had 12 on the roster. Um, you know, I, another girl just contacted me yesterday. She came out of quarantine. She wants to come out and play. So maybe I'll have 13 by tomorrow. We'll see. Um, but as of today, I still have yet to have a full squad practice because of, of you know, of COVID issues. Um, we haven't been completely shut down, which is great. But at the same time, you know, it's hard to gel and mesh when you can't have everybody there at once but you know i really i'm really loving that the effort the girls are putting forward um they're showing up every day they're working hard for me it's it's that's 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 the first step just want you know go over last season a little bit you know before the season start what was like your message to the team you know goals you set um uh, before the season started yeah so we, we we talk every year before the season starts and we try to come up with you know um three goals that we want to hit and and, and you know, we kind of based it off of what we were the previous year, what we lost, who we have coming back, so on and so forth. So last year, you know, I was we had one senior on the team. Um, we had a lot of inexperience at the varsity level. Uh, the senior I had was a three year starter. So she was very confident and, and, and ready to take control of the game. But some of the other kids really weren't ready at the time. Um, I think they came along nicely as the year progressed. But um you know, we played some competitive games. We played some not so competitive games. And that's kind of the way it goes in the shore sometimes when you're, you know, when you're a little fish. And, uh, you know, so goals, we, we want to, listen, we want to make states. That was number one. That was our, that was our big goal. Make states because there have been a couple of years where we didn't make states. And it's, it's, I think it's a big deal for a school when you do. Um, we have that opportunity to play those extra games. Um, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to, you know, we put, we put a win number out there. Um, you know, we try to base it off what's reasonable based on our schedule. Uh, we don't go out and say we're going to beat St. John Vianney because that's we know we know that's not going to happen. So we want to go out and maybe try to hold them under what their team average is. Mm -hmm. So you know, so going into a game like St. John Vianney, I want to say at some point they were averaging like seventy points a game versus B North opponents. So we mm -hmm. said, okay, let's try to hold them under seventy points. I mean, just little game goals like that uh, really kind of helped us stay stay focused a little bit. Um. The, the one senior, uh, her last Bradley, right? Was it? Yeah, Betty Bradley. Yep. Is she, is she is she playing at the next level? Uh, as far as I know, she's not. She was she was uh, getting getting some interest and um, was planning on going to Rutgers Camden, but because yeah, of, because that's of the, what because of the pandemic, um, I believe I'm not sure even Rutgers Camden is even having a season this year. No, they're not. Yeah. Right. So I think she kind of put everything on hold and said, okay. Listen, "I'm not going to go down there, pay all this money for school." not have the opportunity to play ball. I can stay home, um, we'll, you know, stay at the community college, get some of my course credits out of the way. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I, I, I saw her name linked to uh, Rutgers Camden. I, I didn't know if, you know, because schools like that, you know, the smaller schools, uh, if they, they're not having a season, they didn't, they didn't update their rosters for the season. <laughs> so right, right, right. so some of the, the girls that would be freshmen this year playing at the smaller schools, I, you know, you can't tell if they're there or not because you know they're not updating the yep. roster. Yep. Yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunate they're not getting the opportunity, but yeah, it's kind of the state of affairs. Yeah. Um, one game I wanted to talk about um, was the you know it's the only time I got to see your team last season was the Sh Shore Regional game. Um, it was a special event there. Um, just talk about what it meant playing you know for uh, the you know Maya you know the cause. I know the soccer team does that every year. And what it meant for you know you playing an event like that. So um, you know obviously as you mentioned the soccer team has has done the Maya Cup every single yeah. year. Um, now now I don't teach in, in Ocean Township, so I'm not necessarily. Yeah. Privy to all this, I actually teach in Brick, so I, I just come up there to coach. But um, you know, with the soccer team, this is also an event. You know, it's a, it's a large benefit event. Um, the 
the boys basketball coach approached me and said, you know, we know you usually do this, this breast cancer event, but we may want to do this for, you know, one of the kids uh, in our school and one of the teachers families. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's make this happen. Um, so I said, yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's, let's do that. That's, that's, that was a no brainer. And it turned out to be a great event. There was a great turnout for it. Uh, Shore was on board. We reached out to them. They really wanted to help out with it, which, which is awesome. We have a nice relationship with them and their coaching staffs. Um, you know, it, and it was two, comp- it was two competitive games too, yeah. you know, especially on the girls side, it was very competitive. Yeah. Um, so it's a nice rivalry game for us. We always enjoy playing shore. I always like the, to give the banner back and forth between me and Will. Um, you know, so it's always good. It's always kind of a sideshow a little <laughs> bit. So, uh, but you know, we fell a little bit short, which was disappointing, but um, overall it's for a great cause. And um, we'll see about, you know, trying to do that again this year. I don't know if it's going to, this year probably won't, won't happen, but you know, in the future, we look forward to doing it again. Um, what I, I wanted to talk about that game, you know, halftime you had, um, you know, the little kids were playing. I, I don't know how old they were tiny. <laughs> they, they, they were, I, I think they, if I remember they were, they were old. Uh, what does it mean, you know, getting, you know, the youth involved, you know, c- coming out to the school and uh, do you, you know, that helps, you know, helps keep the kids home, you know, in their, you know, their hometown instead of going away to the private schools. Yeah. So, you know, one of the big things since I've been at Ocean, this will be year seven for me. Um, I've always tried to get involved with our middle school program in some regards. Um, and most, most recently, I've started getting involved with our youth uh, township programs. Um, last year, you know, we always, I, we always do it, the big red camp in the summertime as well, which gets a lot of the town kids in as well. Um, so we tried to, you know, cultivate a culture from that. And, um, you know, it, it helps when the kids know me. They know who I am coming up. And it's taken a few years to develop that. But now when I walk in the middle school gym, it's not like this stranger who, you know, who is this guy? The kids know me. They know me from camp. They know me that I coach the high school. They know I'm there to watch them. They know I want to talk to them and find out about how they're doing. Um, so <clears throat> most recently, last, last spring before the pandemic hit, um, I think a day or two before our state game, actually, we – we went over and we did a free clinic for, for any kid that wanted to come from town. Uh, so I, I worked in conjunction with the recreation department and we put on a free clinic for, um, you know, different age levels, uh, a couple hours on a Saturday. And the plan was to do a couple more of them, but it did just, you know, it hasn't yeah. panned out that way. Um, currently I'm, I'm, I'm helping out. I'm coaching in, in the rec department league on Saturdays right now with the little kids. Uh, my son and my daughter are playing as well. So that helps, but uh, just want to get involved in it. it it, it, it kind of, it, it, again, builds that culture a little yeah. bit. That's something that we've been lacking for, for quite a long time. Um, and that's evident based on our numbers that come out. It's very hard to get the numbers. I, I reach out to the soccer coach. I reach out to the field hockey coach. I reach out to everybody and anybody who can find me some athletes that want to come out and play. Because they don't have to be great basketball players, but if they're athletes, yeah. they can. we can teach them, you know. And yeah, and, them. you know, you're, you're obviously not the only public school that goes through that, you know, I'm, I'm – close with the brick staff and you know you know i think they had four soccer players that started for him last year you know um i actually work with i actually with kevin or with tom because i work with tom tom's right down the hall right now um i was kevin kevin over at a township yeah um so um but yeah you know there's other schools that you know you're pulling from other sports you know you know to fill, fill the rosters from a basketball standpoint i'm in the triangle of death you know and now it's now it's the it's the rectangle of death when you throw trinity hall in there uh so you got rbc you got the any you got uh trinity hall uh Ranny's up and coming um yeah. you know who else we have in there there's one there's one more modern day is not too far away so yeah. there's a lot of schools that are pulling kids yeah. um away and you know that's what they need to do to survive but at the same time it's very hard for us to remain competitive when the, the talent yeah. continues to leave yeah. Uh, yeah but that's that's the that's the you know what we've been given and we roll with it we make the best of it and we keep working hard and trying to be competitive um before we start talking about uh, your roster what are some of the you know issues or concerns or you know challenges that you, you're seeing right now or you, you think might pop up during the season you know dealing with covid and uh, you know obviously you know it's coming out more and more teams are missing their first week of games uh, but what else do you think uh, are some of the challenges yeah so uh, obviously with, with on the covid front um, I just got bad news today that that you know my my freshman, um, who's arguably my most talented player right now, um, is going to be out for two weeks due to a, a close contact 
uh, yeah. family member issue. And um, that obviously is going to hurt us and hurt our ability to do some things on the court. But, you know, again, we're looking for the next person to step up and, and give somebody an opportunity in that regard. So there's going to be plenty of playing time at Ocean Township. I'll tell you that much. OK, <laughs> everybody's going to see the floor and everybody's going to have opportunities to, to uh, succeed. Um, that's not going to be an issue. Uh, you know, some of the other issues as far as our program goes, because our numbers are small, when things like that do happen, you know, um, it, it shrinks our ability to do certain things. Now, I still want to have a JV team. I'm, I'm, I'm putting out, we don't have a JV team. I have 12 kids. That's what I have. So everybody's taking a role on JV, seniors on down. So they might be playing a quarter here, a quarter there, um, but they're going to get their five quarters because I, I also want to give those other schools that do have those JV teams an opportunity to play as well. And I don't want to cancel on them because, yeah. you know, everybody's in the same boat and we want to work together and give every, all these kids an opportunity to play. Um, you know, God forbid somebody gets injured. I mean, it, our, our numbers are so little that, you know, it just, the, the, the possibilities are endless for what, what bad things could happen. Um, yeah. You know, um, our, our, I, I like that the, the fact that they allowed us to do some switching with the schedule a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we were able to gather some more uh, competitive games on the schedule, mm -hmm. which worked out uh, to our advantage. You know, we were scheduled to play Manisquan. You know, that's not necessarily a competitive game for us. It's not no. necessarily a competitive game for Manisquan. It doesn't, no. it doesn't help them. It doesn't help us. So uh, we were able to engineer a, uh, a switch. So we got Barnegat. Okay. And Barnegat was able to get Manchester to then go play Manisquan. Yeah. So that's a better game for all four teams. Yeah. Um, so, you know, hopefully the short conference will look at that and say, this is what makes sense to, to, you know, allow these kids to have a great experience because going out and getting beat by 60 is not a great experience for anybody, you know? Yeah. Um, Dawn actually, you know, she brought that up when I interviewed her, you know, she thought this was a good year, you know, with everything going on to tweak the divisions, to make them more competitive. And, you know, because, you know, like you said, you, your team gets nothing out, you know, blown out by St. John Vianney and they don't get anything, you know, you know, they're probably going to third string, you know, at halftime and, um, you know, they want more competitive games and, you know, I'm sure, you know, you as a coach, you know, you want to play, you know, competitive games, not the, you know, the, these teams that, you know, right. Get whoever they want. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, I do like the idea that you were able to switch, you know, uh, you know, and I know a lot of teams took advantage of that, which, which, which is good. And uh, what are your feelings, you know, before we get in the roster with the, uh, you know, the, the pods, uh, the postseason where, you know, it's one, it's going to be one through eight and like nine through 16, you know, Dave from Rumson brought up, you know, we should go all the way down, you know, 17 through 32 and 32, you know, 32 to that, you know, the rest of, you know, sure. And uh, one coach even brought up, you know, you could be a 16 seed and you could compete with the nine, nine seed. But when you're in a big tournament, you know, the, the main tournament, a 16 seed, you're not going to beat the St. John Vianney to one seed. Right. So are you, are you a fan of that, you know, and, you know, going forward maybe as an option for postseason so, for so, short conference at least? Yeah. So for short conference tournament, I mean, there's, in my opinion, this is, and this is my opinion, there haven't been a lot of positives for some programs to necessarily make the short conference tournament. Maybe yeah. that's a goal at the beginning of the year to qualify for it, but yeah. the, the 500 mark doesn't necessarily necessarily mean you're a team deserving of being in the short conference tournament and being able to compete with some of these other level teams. Um, you know, we've only made the short conference tournament once since I've been here. It was my first year here. We were, we were, we were a, a decent program. We were competitive. We lost to St. Rose who was one in the tri-state at the time, in the second round. Um, but since that point, you know, we haven't really been close to 500, you know, at that cutoff point. Um, but you look at some of the teams on the lower end of it, you know, those programs. And listen, congratulations to them for making the short conference tournament. What necessarily did they get out of it? You know, they got mm -hmm. they, they, they lost probably a blowout game mm -hmm. going forward. To me, I'd much rather be able to go and pick up three more competitive games mm -hmm. that give me an opportunity to prepare for my state tournament at that yeah. point, um, you know, and give my kids the opportunity to play competitively. This, it's no secret the same teams are always ending up at the top. You know, it's the same eight teams in the quarters. It's a lot of times the same four teams in the, in the semis, you know, for the most part, you know, over, over the years. Um, and 
you know, they have the best players. And that's 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 really what it comes down to. Every now and again, you get a surprise. But mm-hmm. um, and there are teams that that can compete when there's when there's a couple upsets. But for the most part, that 16 is never beating that one. It's never no. happening. I don't think it's ever happened in, in short conference history. in <laughs> basketball. Maybe going way back. I, I can't be sure. <laughs> but, you know, I wouldn't personally I would much rather play games. I'll give you a great example. Last mm-hmm. year, we went to Homedale late in the season before mm-hmm. the short conference cutoff. Holmdel was in danger of not making the short conference tournament last year. Yeah. That's insane to me. You yeah. know why? One, yeah. they played in the hardest division in the state. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and they were on the, the, the bottom half of that hard division in the state, you know, yeah. with, with RBC, Rumpson, Manasquan, St. Rosa. Yeah. Okay. And Holmdel has a lot of talent and they were a very good team. If you went and looked at their state schedule, which I did, they played an awesome state schedule. Kudos to them. They went out and played some teams. They went up to New Providence and played. They played a couple other programs that that are perennially tough in the States. Um, So they went out and played a a really tough schedule. There is no reason why that team should have been left out of the short conference tournament, you know, had we not gone and played them. Now, we went and played them. Uh, They needed to pick up a game. I said, okay, because honestly, I wanted to see them in it. And we gave them everything they could handle. You know, we end up losing by 15, 20, something like that. But we we played hard, and I was ha- really happy with our performance. Um, but, you know, there, there was no reason that we should have even had to, had to play that game. They should have qualified regardless. Yeah, so this 500 thing, it's antiquated. It needs to be out. Yeah, and, you know, everybody everybody knows, the, you know, situation Shore went in. You know, they picked up that game to get into the – into the shore about that. yeah, that was, yeah. That was... and then they get told that you know they yeah. they can't be in it um which is ironic because two years prior rainy boys played the same amount of games before the shore conference tournament and they you know they were mm-hmm. allowed in but uh yeah it it's just uh i kind of like the idea of you know the, the different uh group uh groups for you know postseason for in the shore and uh Seems like there's quite a few, you know, coaches in, in, in every level, you know, you know, if, if, you know, teams like, you know, like the Rumson coach, you know, he'll probably be in, you know, those top eight, you know, mm-hmm. and he's, he's a fan, fan of it. And, uh, and, you know, I know Dawn, you know, Dawn spoke about, you know, changing things up a little bit, you know, with the schedules and stuff like that. So we'll see, we'll see what happens going forward. I think this year though, you know, there was too much focus on the boys from my understanding when they were coming up with these divisions well, um, you, know, you know, I think there's I think there's an argument to be made that although we you and I both know and a lot of the other coaches know the girls basketball mm-hmm. talent pool across the state is better in the short conference than it is with the boys. Yeah, the, the boys sports are always what drives everything Okay, yeah. across the board. Everywhere you go, boys sports drives everything because they're the ones you're getting the, the pack gyms for. They're the ones bringing in the income. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's never usually the girl side of things, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have a great product to, to, to put out there. I think the eight teams is great. I think playing these little tournament pods, it gives everybody an opportunity. Not necessarily, you know, I don't have to hang a banner. I know Will said he wants to hang a banner. It'll be <laughs> that, that's good for him. But not that we have to hang a banner, but it, it just gives my kids an opportunity to, to, to really play more competitive, balanced games. And, yeah. and I think that's all any coach really wants to have happen, you know. And when you have that great team, you, you'll, you'll have that opportunity to measure yourself yeah. against the best. Hopefully yeah. in a couple of years we'll be there. I don't know yeah. if we will, but mm-hmm. if we if we do, I would really like to see. Here's what I would love to see. I would like to see them go to more like, you know, the Premier League soccer type style. <laughs> okay. Where after maybe two years, we move two teams to this to this next level going up and they move yeah. down. Or they could even redo it after year after year. I don't yeah. think it would be anything. I think that's somebody brought that up too. In yeah. one of my interviews, somebody brought that up. You know, check, you know, see who's coming in, see who they have coming back, you know, see how they did last, you know, and, you know, change it up. I think the athletic directors have to untie themselves from this boys tied to girls thing, too. Yeah. Now we're two totally separate style game and, yeah. and, and the balance of power is totally different in, in each um, yeah. side. Yeah. You know, and I think that's not, that hasn't been taken into account in the past. Um. Talk about. Uh, I want to talk about. Let's talk about your players uh, first. I want to talk about the players you, uh, you got coming back. Uh, how many seniors you got coming back this year? So I have four seniors officially playing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I have a fifth senior that unfortunately um, hasn't been allowed to play because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to miss her. She was a starter last year as a junior. She was our 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 defensive player of the year on our team last who, year. Who was uh, that? Cindy Satute. Okay. 
Um, is she coming back at all or? No. So, so oh. just, that's a family decision. They decided okay. to, you know, um, not let her play. And you got to respect that, you know, there's not, yeah. not much, not much yeah. I can do about it, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm hearing that, you know, there, there's quite a few, you know, spread out the shore that, you know, they decided, you know, not to play this season. Um, I want to talk about one, uh, uh, junior, um, I think she had a pretty good game against Shore. Uh, Lauren uh, Turnbull. Uh, so Lauren's, but, Lauren's a senior. Yeah, yeah, Lauren's a senior this year. Um, she's she's come a long way. I, mean, I, I we call her LT because her initials are LT, but she's we you know she's kind of like the lieutenant a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, she she has come such a long way since her freshman year. Uh, just learn how to handle herself on the court uh, in the competitive environment when you have you know kids that are maybe a little bit better than you. She's learned how to kind of uh, change that speed a little bit. She's not always the quickest kid in the gym, but she's learned how to um, change speeds and change directions to make herself more effective. Uh, she's always somebody who's putting in 110%. She plays through injuries. Um, she's always working on her game. I, I never have to say to Lauren, you need to pick it up. You know, mm -hmm. I, she's, she's working as hard as she possibly can every time. Uh, she's, she's listening. She's doing the right things. She's taking any advice she gets, and then she goes out and attempts to, to put it into practice immediately, which is, you know, as a coach, it's really all I can ask. Um, tremendous kid, great uh, student. Um, you know, all my kids, great, great students. No academic issues on my team, I'll tell you that much. That's, yeah, that's great. Um, the next player, um, she, you're, you're returning leading scorer, you know, well, I mean, your senior led the team, but you, you, the next leading scorer, uh, Lila Trench, uh, what do you expect out of her this year? And um, yeah, so it's, it's it's actually Leela. I mean, Leela. I didn't know that until, until she came to. But um, <laughs> so Leela, Leela Trench, uh, she was actually at Keyport for two years. And then uh, I guess the parents moved and she ended up at Ocean, which is awesome. Um, so we had to kind of talk her into playing last year, to be honest with you. And we, I was so happy when she decided to, to commit and come out. And I think it was a rough go for her to start. But, man, she really settled in over the course of the year. And in the last couple of games, I, I thought her, her stats really improved as well. Uh, she started scoring more points. She was being a little more assertive and confident. Um, and so we're looking for her to continue that. And I think I'm, I'm seeing that right now throughout our practices, that she's ready to continue that and take that next step. Super athletic kid. Um, you know, great hands. She gets her hands on a lot of balls in the passing lanes. We're going to try to use that to our strength this year. Um, she started rebounding the ball for us as well. So it took a little pressure off of, of Betty Bradley last year and, you know, really excited to see the things she does this year. Yeah. She had, I'm looking at the stats, right? A hundred rebounds and she had 51 steals. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's, you know, she's, pretty, she's, she's that means you're doing it on both sides. Of, you're yeah. doing it on both sides of the ball. Um, the next uh, last year, junior, senior this year, Krista, um, what do you expect out of her? Yeah. Krista pushed her. Um, she, she came off the bench. She started a couple games. She came off the bench. She started a couple games. Um, she's somebody we, we relied on for, for a lot of minutes last year. And, again, she's somebody who just is 110% effort all the time. Um, and somebody who's, you know, who didn't necessarily play basketball in the middle school level and then came to the high school and said, oh, let me try this out. And it's, you know, so from freshman year to senior year, it's night and day. It's, it's, it's night and day. Uh, she's really worked on her shot. Um, she is somebody who will take the charge. You know, that's, that's, that's one of the big things I'm really big on with my program is taking charge. Mm -hmm. And when they do, I buy them a pizza. Um, so I think Krista earned several pizzas last year. Um, so, you know, she's one of those people who's not afraid to put her body in harm's way. Um, she gets, she gets, does a lot of the dirty work. She dies on the floor. So, you know, fantastic kid. Uh, the last uh, senior you have listed Delaney, um, you know, looking at her stats, looks like, you know, scored some points, you know, rebound uh, also, you know, double-digit steals. What do you expect out of her? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Delaney, Delaney doesn't have a lot of height to her, mm -hmm. but uh, Delaney is a little little bulldog, and she's getting better at every day. I don't know how she gets the shot off sometimes. She's not afraid to go to the basket. She'll jump stop, and then she'll float it over the top of you. Um, she is has really improved her shot. I'm telling you, when she came into the gym freshman year, I was like, who, who, who is this? What she, is she, is she lost, you know, and, um, and she's just put so much, so much effort into work. She loves playing basketball. And here's the best thing about Laney in the last three years, I don't think she's lost a sprint in practice. 
So that's that's like John Stockton, right? She hasn't yeah. lost a sprint uh, in practice, and we pr- she prides herself on it. And I keep goating the other girls. I'm like, oh, you're so close. You're so close. You're almost there. You almost got her. And then she'll look at me. She's like, nope, coach, I got another gear if I need it. I got another <laughs> one. Um, so, again, another fantastic kid willing to put her body in harm's way, take the charge. Um, she, she finds a way to put the ball in the basket when she takes her shots. So it's, it's, it's just a matter of with some of these kids is, you know, keeping them out of, of harm's way as far as taking care of the basketball. Sometimes our decision-making isn't always the best, and that's what we're continually working on developing is our decision-making. Now, you uh, – any new seniors? Uh, I do not have any new okay. seniors. Those are my those are my four seniors this year, and then uh, unfortunately, minus Cindy, who's going to be a big loss for us. Um, what I like to ask is, what do you hope that the seniors pass down or you know uh, share with the the underclassmen? I, I think they've done this already. To be honest with you, I think a few years back, um, I had I was coaching effort and I was coaching, you know, work ethic and. I think this was the first group that really, really bought into putting that work ethic in across the board. And I think now, now it's just the expectation. They come into the gym and they know what to expect and they know how hard they have to work. And the expectation is that everybody's going to do it like they do it, you know? Um, so I, I think it, they're showing, you know, what needs to be done in order to get better because they've all individually as basketball players become – so much better than when they walked into the gym as freshmen that that's one of the things I'm most proud of. And I think that's more of a, you know, a, a life lesson for them. That's going to carry them farther than what basketball ever will. Sorry about that. My phone went off. Um, yeah. And it's, I like, you know, to build, pro- that's how I think you build programs. So you get the strong senior leadership to buy in and, you know, passing that down to, you know, the underclassmen. Listen, but I was hollering at them yesterday because, you know, we were, we were in a drill and we weren't communicating. And the first people I hollered at was them. I said, because you guys aren't communicating, nobody else, the younger kids aren't going to do it yeah. right away. You have to show them first. Yeah. And then, then they're shaking their head. They know, they know, yeah. they know. So, and then they go out and they change it. So. Um, it looks like on your, you had one sophomore last year, Bella, the junior this year. Um, what do you expect? Does she play soccer? No, she doesn't. Okay. Think... Um, Bella Chabukchin. Yeah. Uh, Bella is... Um, was our was our only player that actually played basketball year round. So she was the only player in our program that was doing basketball um, year round. Played AAU, um, played for John Mayo's program uh, for AAU. So she's getting a lot of great coaching and opportunities there. And <clears throat> you know, Bella's somebody who's been developing for a couple of years. But I, I've known Bella for for a long time before she ever came to the high school, and we've been looking forward to having her. Uh, I think she's really developed a nice shot. She had some injury issues early on, freshman, sophomore year. And then she's developed into having a nice real mid-range shot. Um, she's, she's able to get to the basket. Um, she, she's somebody who loves basketball, and she has the IQ for it, which helps us. Um, so, you know, I'm looking for her to kind of be that, be that person to knock down some shots, you know, especially when we're shorthanded. So she's going to she's gonna step up a little bit for us. Uh, the last two returning players, or three actually, um, you had three freshmen that saw uh, minutes. Uh, One of them's not with us anymore. Uh, uh, which? Uh, Jane, uh, Jane. Jane? Uh, yes. So um, Jane decided not to play this year as well. Um, so I only have two returning sophomores. Okay. So Abby, did she play soccer, Abby? She does. That, she that does. yeah, that, I said her name Her, her name looked familiar from the soccer roster. So you had yep. Abby and uh, Emily uh, Peters. Um, yep. Yep. What do you expect them to have bigger roles this season? Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I, I think last year they got some opportunities at the varsity level, which is going to help them uh, this year. Uh, Abby, actually, you know, in one of our wins last year, we didn't have many of them, but in one of them, she was uh, she played a big role down the stretch, uh, rebound, hit some free throws at the end against Matawan to really kind of carry us through that game. And that was that was a big thing for a freshman. And I'm not sure she actually knew what she was doing, but she's she, she seems to be in the right place at the right time to have her hands on the ball. She gets her hands on, on, on the ball a lot. So between her and, and Leela, I'm really looking to get them into the passing lanes a lot, make things happen defensively with them. Um, she, she does a great job of reading the passes and getting her hands on the ball. Um, we're, just, you know, we're working on developing some of those skills and, and keeping it more basketball. So, 
I know she's she's a soccer head, and that's that's yeah. that's okay. But we you know we want to develop some of those basketball skills as well. And same thing with Emily. Emily comes in wants to be more of a shooter, which is fine. We need some of those as well. Um, unfortunately, Emily's coming off of, of of a COVID issue right now too, so she's kind of just working her way back in. Mm-hmm. You know, it's only a couple, a couple days of practice, um, but she's somebody that we look to to help us out as well this year. And she had great opportunities last year as well. Um, I want to talk about uh, incoming freshmen. Um, you have one, you know that you know everyone everyone know you know knows about her. Um, uh, what's her name? Eli Eli Clark. Um, I know she's going to be out because protocols uh, yep. for two weeks. But um, what do you, what what have you seen out of her so far? And you know what do you expect? You know going forward. Um, you know once she's able to get on the court. Yeah, so Eli came in and has, has been a leader on our team right away as a freshman, you know, being vocal, um, telling girls to count things out, telling girls where they need to be on, on the break. So she has a lot of experience. She kid loves basketball. She wants to stay after practice and do more shooting. Um, she gets there early. She's one of the first people on the court, and she's working on different things on her own. Um, so her, her attitude towards basketball is, is – is, is up there. It's like a player I haven't had before. Okay. As far as that goes, I've had some decent players. We have coached a 1200 point score who never put an extra day of practice into her life in basketball. So Eli's a different breed in that regard for us at ocean. And, um, you know, she's, she's somebody we're going to look to, to have a huge role for us. I mean, you know, that, that she's going to be the motor that makes the, uh, the car go, the engine that makes the car go. And, you know, unfortunately we're going to be out with, with our for two weeks, when that's the way it is, when she comes back, I expect her to, to seamlessly come back and be able to uh, pick up where she left off. Um, I have no doubt that that she's going to have a huge career here at Ocean. Um, you know, I fully expect her to be the next person with her name on a banner, you know, mm-hmm. a thousand point score. And, you know, I think she has some 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 big things ahead of her. Uh, her work ethic is that good. But um, the other thing that's crazy about her, too, is her ability to pass the ball, okay, is – Second and none, in my opinion. I mean, she's made a couple of passes already off pick and rolls that I, I'm like, I don't even know how she got the ball in there. And, you know, I actually said to her, I go, I'm not sure she's ready for that yet. Like, you know, you know, <laughs> talking about one of the other players and, you know, just keep in mind who you're passing the ball to and maybe yeah. thinking about what, what kind of pass you're giving them at, at, at the same time. So it's, it's awesome to see her develop too. Known her for a long time. It's great. Um, I look forward to, you know, getting to see her on the court. Uh, any other freshmen this season? Yeah, we have, uh, we have, a, we have a couple more freshmen. Um, guy yeah, caught me off guard now. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we have a, a girl, Gamilla Benton. Um, Gamilla is really tall. She's about 6'1", 6'2". She's oh, about my height. Okay. And long arms, has an athletic build to her. Um, she ferociously goes up and rebounds, which is awesome. Um, so we're going to look for things from her. You know, I don't know if she's going to be ready for that varsity speed right away, but I think again, all these kids are going to see time this year because we're just going to build, um, uh, Bella's sister, Sophie Chabukchin is a, is a freshman this year. She's going to see a lot of time for us at the varsity level. And she's somebody who also plays year round, uh, basketball. Um, she was also the field hockey goalie as well, but, Basketball, I think it's her, her 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 thing. She plays a lot of AAU. She travels, does all that stuff, and um, you know she's got some nice post moves. I've had these kids playing some some fall league and summer league ball for the last couple of years as as middle school kids, and I've seen her put post moves on high school kids. So I know she can do it. Um, you know, we want to work on her aggressiveness. Um, you know, we don't want to take those those passive stances, but I, I think she's somebody who's definitely going to contribute for us and, and do some really good things. Um, Natalie Fenninger, another little soccer girl. You know mm-hmm. Natalie, right? I know Natalie's a very good soccer player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that's her number one. We got her out to play, and you know we're looking forward to some uh, to her helping us out as well. I think she's got a nice aggressive mindset, and you know a lot of it's just development, just just developing some of those basketball skills. I tell people all the time, basketball is a hard sport. It's a hard sport it, because you got to play offense, you got to play defense. It's fast paced. You got to be thinking on your feet. It, it, you know. Listen, soccer's hard too, but there's 11 people on a soccer field. The scores are like one nothing, two nothing, three one. You can kick the ball and it's not going to affect your team. You make a bad pass in basketball, they're scoring two points the other way every time. 
Yeah. And so it, it, it's hard. And I think that's why a lot of kids maybe don't want to play basketball, mm-hmm. you know, in some places, because it, it's too difficult. It's, it's, it's uh, requires a skill set uh, to be successful at. So that's something, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the kids that do come out and play for me because they, they, they take on a real challenge. Uh, it sounds like, like, you know, seeing Natalie play soccer, you know, she has a little size to her. Uh, you, you got the six foot one freshman and uh sounds like you got some size on the team what's that not was actually the smallest girl oh wow yeah and she's you know some of the soccer players are short short, but you know she's tall you know on the total side on soccer so you got some height on your team which is which is good well i I like some more believe me i like some more but um, you know it's it's nice to have some 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 young players um that do have some height uh that we can build around and, and and work with and a lot of a lot of times, a lot of stuff I run, we try to get the ball into the post as much as possible. So those kids are going to get a lot of opportunities. Okay. Coach, I appreciate you know taking time. I'll let, let you go. Um, uh, do you have a scrimmage today? or? Yeah, we got uh, Long Branch today at uh, 345. So I got to jump on a, a quick IEP meeting here at school, and then I got to head home, pick up some stuff, and then go to the scrimmage. So okay. life doesn't stop. You know, I got to yeah. keep it going. Um, just one last question. Are, is Ocean going to be streaming uh, games? We are. We're in the process of trying to work it out with um, Huddle and YouTube right now. Okay. We have, the, we have the camera on the wall. It's all set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the games are all loaded in. We tried to, to live stream the freshman uh, boys scrimmage yesterday, and I guess there was some technical difficulties. Oh, this is the time to work it out, though. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully we're going to have it up maybe today, and if not, hopefully by our first home game. All right, excellent. Okay. All right, Coach, I'll, I'll let you go. you got a busy day. I appreciate you taking some time out today. Thanks for having me, Nick. It's a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care.